Fashion designers have become very creative with bidding and embellishment. I mean, look at this gorgeous outfit made by the stunning Vicky James out here in Nigeria. She made this outfit for Tewa Savage. And I mean, look at the way she incorporated wire work beading, hand beading, rhinestones, cup chain, and the end result just looks incredibly beautiful. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys all the raw materials that you need to recreate something like this if you wish or to do something even more beautiful than this. I'm going to be sharing a beading pattern that you can use to make probably an outfit or a hair accessory or just incorporate it however you like. So if you're interested in knowing all about this process, please make sure you watch this video to the end, like this video, subscribe to my channel, share with your friends and all that good stuff. All right, guys, let's get straight into today's video. Let's go. <laughs> For this beading pattern, you need your sequins. I already have my fabric out here. This fabric is the usual felt that I typically use for my beading patterns. And I already went ahead to sew on some cloth stone. I'm also going to be using some seed beads as well as some crystal beads. These crystal beads are size 4. Use any size of crystal bead you like. And I'm also going to be using this cup chain. What I'm going to first of all do is I'm going to use my cup chain to just secure the edge of my cutout fabric, okay? And this is how I typically go about it. I've done something similar to this on one of my latest videos. I'm going to try to link it on the screen. In that video, I showed you all how I incorporate cup chain into my beading patterns. If you've not seen that video, I suggest you check it out. Like I said, I'll link it on the screen. Also, you can scroll to the bottom of my description bar to click on the video and just watch it. But what I'm doing here is I'm basically trying to figure out the length of cup chain that I'm going to require to seal up the edge of this particular cutout fabric. And once that was figured out, I whipped up my glue for this kind of work. Like I said, watch that other video, but I mentioned in that video that I like to use glues that have like a small nozzle just to make my work very precise and neat. And for this work, I'm going to be using my B6000 glue. Okay, you can see that the mouth of the or the tip of the glue is very very small and it doesn't become overwhelming when you're trying to just apply a little bit of glue on your fabric with precision so yeah i suggest i use something similar to this and after putting glue along the edge of the fabric i went ahead to just stick on my cup chain on the points where i placed the glue just like i'm doing on the screen okay and once that was done i went ahead to just press down very well just to make sure that the cup chain is sitting perfectly on the fabric and there's no you know weirdness with the placement so you want to do this very slowly and steadily just to make sure that your work looks precise if you guys remember the video that i showed you at the beginning of this video you could see that with the um petal kind of effect that the outfit had on tiwa savage something like this was going on we had a little bit of cup chain situation going on on that particular design so yeah this is how you would typically go about it after you've cut out the shape that you like you just go ahead to apply some glue along the edge of whatever fabric it is that you're working with and then stick on your rhinestone some people will say you should sew on your cup chain but that takes a lot of time and is more stressful but with glue you can be sure that your work is going to in this case i trust glue i know i talk so much about how i don't like glue but if you go about it this way be sure that your cup chain is going to sit perfectly on the fabric so i'm just going to repeat that process again along the second end of this fabric apply a bit of glue and then stick on my cup chain like so After sticking on the cup chain, I went ahead to also press down to make sure that the cup chain is sitting perfectly on the fabric and it's not lifting off at all. At this point, it will be time for us to now get into the beading proper. I also went ahead to show you guys briefly how I went about sewing on the cloth stone that I used. Because remember at the beginning, I simply just showed you the cloth stone already attached to the fabric. But I just thought of it that some people might be wondering how I went about sewing on the cloth stone onto the fabric. So I decided to do this quick little clip for you guys. So 
I'm going to allow you just watch the way I'm doing it so you can replicate it on your work. If you have any questions, as usual, I always tell you guys, feel free to drop your questions in the comment section. And if you also have suggestions for me or any form of feedback, I'm always happy to read from you. So please be sure to leave me comments in the comment section. But I'm going to keep quiet now, allow you guys watch the way I'm going about, you know, sewing on my cloth stone to the center point of this particular piece of fabric. And once that is done, we'll move on to the next stage in this tutorial. Now that I'm done securing my cluster at the center of this fabric, it's time to start beading. And for the beading, I like to start off with just seed beads all through, okay, for the very first line. And then afterwards, I start to do, you know, combination of different accessories and crystals. But for this particular design that we are doing, I'm doing a combination of seed beads and sequins. Feel free to do any combination you like. And I'm doing three seed beads one sequin and then three more seed beads and then when i move on to the second line i do just seed beads all through i hope it all makes sense and yeah just watch what i'm doing more than listening to what i'm saying look at the way i'm picking up my beads and the combination that i'm doing and replicate it on your work or even do something nicer than what it is that i'm doing right here for you guys so i'm going to keep quiet now allow you guys to watch the way i'm you know just combining everything together to give us a beautiful result and once i'm done doing the beading i'm going to come back to talk to us on the next day Alright guys, so now that I've gone this far, I'm going to just repeat the same process all around and voila, this is what we have here. So for the center point, you see that we can still see the fabric and most times I don't like to see the fabric. I want everywhere to be covered in beads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a combination of seed beads and crystal beads, okay? Like I said, you can do whatever combination you like. You can decide to even repeat this same combination at that point. You can do the same sequence and seed bead combination or do just um seed beads or just do all um crystal beads if you like all right so you don't have to do what i'm doing word for word all right so like i said i'm going to do a combination of seed beads and crystal beads up until i cover everywhere such that i can't see the base fabric that i'm beading on and once that is done we're going to move on to the next beading pattern that i'm going to be sharing with us in this video if you've been enjoying the video so far please be sure to hit the like button thank you all right guys so i'm just going to go off camera real quick and do everything and this is what we have here you see that you can't even see the base fabric everywhere is covered in beads i did a couple more pieces off camera because i was planning to create a particular headband design which i'm going to be sharing in my next video so be sure to stay subscribed so you see how i go about combining all these beaded accessories to create something stunning the end result looks 
absolutely beautiful and i'm going to save the surprise for you guys till the next video so you see how i'm going to be placing all these on my headband such that i create something incredibly beautiful Another thing I'm going to be sharing with us is another beading pattern. Like I said earlier, the beading pattern that I used for my last Ashoki headband video, somebody requested that I share how I created the beading pattern that I placed on the on the Ashoki headband. If you've not seen that video, I'm also going to link it in the description and on the screen. So feel free to check out that video so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for that beading pattern, I used a combination of sequins and seed beads, but this time the placement is different. So I placed one sequin at the base of my fabric and then I stacked three pieces of seed beads on top and sewed it down. With the sewing i don't know how to explain it just watch the way i'm passing my needle and thread and that was what i did and i also now did an incorporation of different beading patterns that i've already shared previously on the channel i did the linking chain um linking chain beading pattern the one where you have like a dangling piece of um bead i don't know how to explain all these beading patterns honestly that's why i suggest that you watch my beading pattern playlist so you know all the beading patterns that i've shared on here on the channel so i did a combination of three different beading patterns and created something incredibly beautiful i'm going to keep quiet now i like you guys what the way i'm combining my sequence and beads and then i will now go ahead to show you the end results of this particular beading pattern Something else that I'd like to mention is the fact that you can get any one of these sewing accessories from your sewing accessories shop in your location. I know we have a lot of new people on here and I've been getting questions of recent from people asking, oh, where do I get headbands from? Where do I get beads from? Where do I get fabric from? You can get them from your local sewing accessories shop. For those that might be living out here in Portacot, I shared where I typically buy my supplies from here in Portacot. So feel free to check out that video. I'm going to try and link the video in the description bar and on the screen. So if you've not seen it, go check it out so you can contact any one of the people that i shared in that video to get your own supplies and for those that are living outside of portacourt or living outside of nigeria entirely you can get any one of these things from any local craft or sewing accessory shop in your location For times when your thread gets tangled up, all you need to do is just stick your needle through the tangle and most times it's just going to loosen up. So I thought to share that at that point. Now that I'm done doing this combination of sequence and beads, I went ahead to do the connecting chain beading pattern as well as the overlapping beading pattern using seed beads and crystal beads and this was the end result of that combination. I hope you all enjoyed this particular video. If you did, please hit the like button. Also feel free to drop me comments in the comment section and yeah guys i can't wait to see you in another video bye bye